Good morning. Welcome back to Pages Into the Past. Today we're going to make the Hamilton Spencer off of the Etsy site that sells the Hamilton Spencer. I know a lot of people did this last year, but I decided that I'm going to try and attempt it for 2022. Uh, costume College. The tea event is is a uh, Pride, Prejudice, and Zombie, and I thought what a perfect opportunity to make this Hamilton Spencer since I don't have a lot of Regency things that I can wear or even go do due to my location. So right now what I'm doing is I am taping together the pattern and I taped it together in single rows to start with. And now what I'm doing is lining them up by row. This pattern happens to have stars that you can line up for star points as well as the dotted line. So I'm going to put this third piece on here. And then I'm going to cut out what needs to be cut out as far as pattern pieces. Like this is your front this is one of the sleeve petals, the neck, or the, the collar, and that way I can keep taping together as I go, cut off the pieces on the bottom part, keep adding until I have all my pieces. There are eight or ten different lines. There was over 60 pages to print just for the pattern. So... I'm going to tape that together and get pieces cut out and uh, we'll get started. So after I got the pattern cut out, I did a test fit and found out that the size that I thought I was was way too big. So I came down a size, much better fit. I think it might still be too big, but because this is going over other clothing pieces because it's the Spencer jacket. I'm going to go with this slightly larger size than I think I need, just so that it comfortably fits over whatever I put underneath of it. The fabric that I've chosen is a changeable iridescent taffeta, and the underdress will probably be in seafoam green colors, something like this. This changes in the light. It also allows if I had a purple under. A purple underskirt or a purple underdress. I've decided not to go white because everybody goes white and I'm one of those people who says I'm not gonna go white because one I'll spill on it. Me and white don't go together and two I don't like being part of the crowd that always does white. If it was a group project and they all wanted to go white I would do it but for personal use I want to do something a little different. And because this is interchangeable, the colors, I think that when I do the piping and the zigzag that it shows on a lot of the, the sleeves and the arms, it'll pick up different colors. And so that's what drew me to this fabric. And I have plenty of it. So I'm going to cut this out. Then I'll cut out the sleeves and piping. Piping is like three yards of, four yards of uh, bias strips so I might be cutting all day but this is what we're going to do we're going to line it in that uh, sea foam color I have this shiny sea foam color I think I'm going to put that as the lining and that way if it shows when I make the dress out of the other sea foam it's not an exact match but it's close but first of all, I got to get this cut out. So this pattern, I think if I did the math right, I need 27 yards of bias strip. Some of them have a minimum requirement of at least 40 inches because they need to be one piece for some of the rouleau. But yeah, so here I am cutting it apart. Woohoo! This pattern has a lot of little fiddly bits and it says to make 30 of these little buttons and they tell you to cut out two inch squares 
and then they want you to stitch a circle the size of a quarter. So what I did is I grabbed a quarter and I stitched a circle on 32 inch squares and then I grabbed a false pearl it's just a little fake pearl with a hole in it and so now I'm covering them with my fabric so that they can be attached at the motifs and I think there's a part on the sleeves that it goes to so yeah after this I've got to make the Rolu Rolu uh, the the trim um, to do the uh, the motifs I've also got to do the double bias or the double double cord out of bias and then there's also um, on the sleeves they get this Christmas tree design and that's flat so I cut 27 I'm hoping it's 27 yards I cut a lot of two inch wide bias um, I decided I wasn't going to stand up and iron it all at one time so I figured I'd get these little buttons done and when that's done then I'll work on the either the double trim because that goes all the way around there's yeah either that or I'll work on the Rolu Rolu trim but we will just keep trucking along I figure a little bit at a time with this so this is the Rulo trim. I am using a very thin piece of cording. My other option was this very thick piece of cording. And it said to use half the size, but I think I'm using about quarter of the size. So I was having a very hard time pulling it through the way the direction said. So what I've been doing is I'm stitching it at 1 8 inch then I'm trimming it down, turning the piping, turning it through, and then putting the cord. So what I'm doing is I'm stitching one eighth inch. Then I'm trimming down the seam allowance, pulling the cording out, turning the pipe, turning the the sleeve, and then putting the cord back in in order to end up with cording like that and this is for the motif so that's the difference that I did because they wanted you to just pull it through on its own onto another piece the same piece of cord and that's a lot of waste and I don't like to waste so that's what we're working on Right now, still working on the petals. You can see where I have chalk lined out and traced where the petal leaves go. When you get them all done, it looks something similar to this. It is very time consuming, very monotonous and fiddly. And it takes a lot of bias trim because you got to sew it down. Then you have to trim it. Then you have to clip it. Then you have to curve it. And you're doing one, two, one, two, all the way around. So, yeah. So, I've got four of the six petals done. I would show you how this is done, but I don't have the setup for that. There is another gal, Jalea, Jalea, Jalea Ward, I believe is her name. I'll post a link. She has an excellent tutorial on how she did hers. And if you're interested in learning how to do it that way, uh, the directions state to pin it on and then, or pin it, 
curve it, pin it, flip it, stitch it, so that you have a seam line going down each set of petals. Um, mine overlap, and theirs actually has a seam line, so I kind of like mine. Um, I don't know, you might be able to see it in this. My fabric turns different colors depending on the angle that you're at. So, I thought that that would be kind of a neat little thing because I don't know. You can kind of see some of the purple going to green here. But yeah, that's what I'm working on. I've got these two left to do and then I have to work on the double piping. And then when I get the regular stuff done, or when I get all that done, that is the motifs that have to be stitched with the single piping. So right now I'm just working on all of the accessory parts. So, yep, uh, it's taken me two days to get this far on just the two... The four petals. Um, I might be able to get these two done today, but not in a great big hurry. So we'll see where it takes us. So today is all about double piping. I have tried, I think, eight different ways to do double piping, and none of them made me happy. So what I decided to do was take two strips of single piping and sandwich them to make double piping so that you get this kind of nice definition between the two layers. Because when you try to put the second piece of twine in here, it doesn't sit, it doesn't roll. It just, it separates, and so then you have like this, and I'm not real thrilled with that. So, being that I had enough of this fabric, and I had already pre-cut enough strips, I didn't have to cut any extra, I decided I was just going to double layer them. Um, some of the videos that I've watched have shown that that's just the easier way to do it instead of fighting it. And I figure I've spent too many days at this point in time on just the trims of this jacket that I am done trying to figure it out and so I'm just going to sew it together this way. So if you decide to try to do the two-in-one, good luck, more power to you. I'm not ready to conquer that skill today. All right, back to sewing. I am now getting back to this project. We are traveling from the road and I had pre-cut and pre-marked all of my pattern pieces and so today I'm working on this Rolu trim and this little leaf has taken me approximately an hour and a half to complete. So I only have five more to go. Yay me. So here's the hand sewing. I'll check back with y'all later. Hey everybody, I just wanted to give you an update. You know me and my hand sewing, it takes forever and I just so enjoy doing it. Not. So what I'm working on is the Hamilton Spencer sleeve. And it's a triangular piece. And you can see by the color coding, uh, each layer, so the bottom layer is black and then the top layer is red. And I watched video after video after video of how to make this, how to do this, how to stitch it down, because the directions are not 100%. Um, I think somebody said it's presum presumed assumption of you having some kind of knowledge of how stage outfits are made. And you can see here, I color-coded the directions and then I transfer those to the pattern piece. And so it just, you know, what it tells you to do is to thread mark your seams, to flatline your piece. Um, it says start at the bottom corner, alternating notches. Well, there's really no notches. Um, there's little dashes here. 
and so I mark those and so I marked those on my pattern piece and I did put a piece of stabilizer on the back here some horsehair stabilizer and it was really difficult for me to figure out how to get this done so the directions say to put notches or to, to do it in notches and you can see here how they have these marked on this pattern piece and so what I did is I just have them marked on my fabric and then it just tells you to start at the bottom and, and stitch them on but what it doesn't tell you is how to stitch them on it just says uh, stitch end begin making lattice design from bottom corner use alternating notches fold and pin um, cut here's what I missed I missed the cut bias at top and begin again at the bottom quarter because I was trying to get it to fold back on itself and I couldn't get my twists and my turns right so it took me probably an extra hour longer and I went and jumped to a bunch of different videos of people who've already made it and again I didn't I missed that part so once I slowed down and I read it again and I cut it then I was able to get this beautiful design now this is one fourth because I have to do it on this side and then I have to do the other sleeve but as you can see it turns out really really pretty and uh, this here was a gift from my friend uh, she uh, every time I see her she has the most wonderful gifts for everybody thank you Deborah I really enjoy it it's come to much great use in the short time that I've had it and uh, it stays in my to-go traveling bag so now I'm gonna get back to stitching this other piece and I still have the other sleeve to do so uh, when we get done with all the stitching we're gonna add the little the little balls on all of it and then this also has like a, a tie at the top and then I still have to add the little button balls to the Spencer jacket as well so here we go hand stitching again yay have a great one. And they're done. As you can probably see, they're not 100% perfect, but then, hey, you know, they're unique. I was able to get the other three sections done much faster once I figured out how to do the first one. I have run out of my bias. I didn't follow the directions exact enough. I probably should have drawn it out better. Some of mine went over and made it too wide on one side so I ended up using more than I need more of the bias then I had to borrow from this one and you know it happens when you borrow from Peter to pay Paul you run up short so they're all done for now next step is going to be putting it all together by machine welcome back to another day of sewing while on the road Today is a windy, blustery day, and we are in campground just outside of Spokane, and it's snowing everywhere but here. So it's cold, it's windy, you can hear the wind blowing our tarp around. Uh, so today, I'm just going to start putting the jacket together. I've done a lot of the handwork already. You can see how on the jacket front I've got the three motifs done here. Only thing left to do is to add the button, the button balls on. Uh, both sides are done. I went ahead and sewed the lining. Uh, the back pieces are all together, backs and side backs. Uh, and then one thing that I wanted to show you was the inside front lapel the the lapel probably should have had the this probably should have gone on the front jacket piece but I put it on the lining and it's a little bit too late to change that now directions don't give you well there are no directions on how to put it together they're assuming that you know how 
Uh, so these two pieces I put together in order to f to do the shoulder piece with the jacket front. And I didn't trim this yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to. I might trim down the horse hair a little bit uh, so that it's underneath here, this shell lining. And then I press the seam open so that it gives a nice smooth effect. When I pressed the side backs open on the main fabric here, I, I just took my iron and I didn't touch it, but I steamed it open and then I hand pressed it on my mat so that the pieces don't show through because it's so thin, if you if you hot press this, I'm afraid that it will show the cut marks that I did here, and it'll show all along here. So, so all I did was I just steamed it, and then I flipped it and pressed it with my hand in order to get it to lie mostly flat. And then the lining will be against that as well to help hold it in place. So I'm going to keep assembling today. I do have to figure out how to add the piping. Piping is new. And of course I had to do it double hard and do double piping. So I'm thinking my little steam iron here is going to get quite the workout today. And I will keep you updated. Hey everybody, I'm back. Well, I am trying to attach this double piping. I was going to do it last night, and it got the better of my brain. So you know what they say, walk away, sleep on it. So I came back this morning, and I am working on the collar. And I've got it pinned or clipped on. And in the corners here, I have got, went ahead and clipped the corners so that I could get it to bend here. And I've got my zipper foot on here, and I'm going to stitch super close to the yellow line so that it holds it as close as I can. Once that's on, then I'm going to put the lining piece on and restitch it again, trying not to catch the double bias in that. And then I will attach that to the jacket piece. I went ahead and stitched the double bias on the front lapel of the jacket. That way I got the fear of the double bias out of my brain. And then I decided, I think what I was doing last night is I was trying to put the double bias on the lining piece that has the hair canvas. And I wasn't quite happy with that. So now I decided just to put it on the other piece, the outer shell, and go forward with it from there. So, wish me luck. I'm going to stitch this down, and hopefully I don't have to get my seam ripper out. Now you can see I got the collar done. It is the double. It's a little bit harder than I thought. I did a couple extra stitches. I may have to take out some of the stay stitches in here a little bit or I might just leave them and call it good so I got that part done trimmed turned so I'm gonna give it a good press and then I'm gonna start attaching it to the jacket it's currently still windy and looks like it's starting to snow a little bit it is cold um, we're running about 64 65 degrees inside here you can see the strap right there that's kind of holding our awning from flapping too much and the wind the wind gusts and yeah you know it's a little bit more snow can't really see outside that it's really snowing but yeah so now we'll get back to doing what we're doing here. It says it's about 36 degrees outside and my dog likes the heater so we got it running and uh, yeah we're gonna just keep on selling. 
Hey everybody, welcome back to Sewing Land. So, we're traveling in the Pacific North Northwest, and we were in Spokane the other day, and now we're in Newport. And it snowed a couple times here, and then melted, of course, right away. You know, these April storms. You won't get this video till after April, but... So, what I've had to do, because it's been like 20 degrees outside, I had to move my sewing room back to the front room and back to the table. And the reason I did this is because the dark hole of gloom, we close the curtain off and keep the heat focused in the front half of the motorhome. So if I work out here, it stays warmer and I don't have to use as much propane. So you can see I set up a little bit of a ironing center here. And then I've got my sewing center here. I'm almost done with this Spencer jacket. I won't be able to finish it while I'm on the road because apparently I only brought one half of the waistband. So unless I can find something in that green. Uh, because I don't think I'll be able to match this. I'll have to wait till I get home. So that's what we're doing right now is we are finishing up the sleeves, the sleeve puffs. We'll attach that and then I think that's we're gonna get all the sleeve parts done. There's there's the sleeve puff, the sleeves, and then the the petals. The petals that go on the sleeves, those are already done. Get that all together, and then when I get home, all I have to do is the double bias on the waistband and attach the waistband and whatever fastener I'm going to use. So that's our update. You can see that the snow has melted. It's a little wet looking outside. But that's where we're at. So keep on sewing. Hey everybody. Well, this is as far as I can get on my jacket. I forgot to bring the other waistband lining. So I can't exactly finish this. I also don't have the right undergarments. But this is about as close as I can get. You can see the sleeve puffs are done. I've got the sleeves. The waistband will pull it close and hold it closed. You can see here I've got these parts done here, again that part, the sleeve puffs. So, so yeah, this is about as far as I can get because I left half of the waistband at home and, or I didn't cut it out, I'm not sure which. So when I get back home, I'll be able to add the waistband and call this finished. So I figured I'd give you an update to where we are. And I'll finish recording this once we get home because as you can see, we're still in the motorhome. Two more weeks and then we go home. So keep on sewing. Okay, so I finished the jacket. Yay me! So there was a lot of new things that I had never done before. A lot of things that I'm still learning. One of the things that I had never done before was make my own roulette trim. Pretty simple. You sew long tubes together that are very narrow, turn them through and stitch them down. And then there was piping. Now I've never used piping before, so this is probably not the best time to do double piping. But hey, you know, we're all up for a challenge. And so not only did I do double piping and roulette, uh, and then I had to make fabric button balls. And yeah. So the pattern that I used was the Hamilton Spencer pattern. I used the plus size pattern. Little bit of adjustment. Ended up making more adjustment on the waist. Uh, because I made it just a little bit too big, the waistband. So had to recut a little bit of that. And future me, 
thinks that we're going to make a matching stovetop hat from scratch. And I think I will also change out my underdress to something in the sea foam green to help bring out some of the colors. The taffeta, it's very, um, it, there's like three different tones with it. So in certain lights, it looks kind of gray. In certain lights, it picks up purple. And in certain lights, it picks up this really pretty shade of green. And I thought the green needed to be enhanced a little bit. So we're going to work on that. And hopefully that will all get done for the Costume College tea, the Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies tea. So, all right, now for the reveal. Okay, we're done. Now, I'm going with my friend, the sucky seamstress, Emily, and saying it passes the 10-foot rule. If you get too close, you'll see every mistake I made. But that's okay. It was my first attempt. This was not the easiest pattern. But I think it works. So, for no further to do. That's it. So if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and um, see you in two weeks. Thanks. Bye.